There you go. Yeah, you changed it. Okay. So. All right. That's how you shoot missiles. Yeah. You'll find plenty of those. Yeah. <laughs> Closed up. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Don't want to deal with that. Oh, fuck that. God. We move to mess. Um. Yeah, I always check out what's going on at Luna Liverpool because there's some cool movies coming out. Yeah, I should go see more movies. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying going to go see new like movies. Like I went to One Piece by myself, which I usually wouldn't do, but I had a fine time. I sat down with, with. It's a door. You have to go shoot down. I'm sure of it. Oh no, it's not. It spits out death. It's a portal. Oh, that's fine. I want to go back in anyway. Portal to death. Oh, I'm on the back here. Can you go back up? So I um, kickstarted a game called Need to Know. You personally, or? Yep, I funded the whole thing. You contributed to the Kickstarter. They had a um, campaign. I rang them up and went, shut the campaign down. I'll fund it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're an Australian um, company based in Adelaide. Called, Adelaide. Called Monolith. <laughs> What, this Mon Monomyth Games or something, I think. And um, it's like Papers, Please. Yeah. But you're the NSA, basically. And you investigate people's, like, online presence and stuff. For key keywords of terror. We had a local developer make a game like Papers, Please, except you were... Uh, um, receptionist at Centrelink. And you had to protest people sending <laughs> sending like applications. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. <laughs> and he like brought the packs and showed off there. Is it coming out? I'll hey. buy it. Oh yeah, it's like it's like free online. Like you yeah, I'm not the shit. Actually, I'll send you a link to. He makes like a game like every other week. Oh, that's awesome. It's just like dumb shit like that. I'll play that. Like one's like a Pauline Hanson racial slur simulator or something <laughs> like that. That guy's on the cutting edge. <laughs> oh no, he's really cool. Um. No, and they, they just released the, like, the pre-alpha, you know, like, super early build of it. Yeah. Um, it's really fun. I really enjoy That's it. That's cool. You get your objective at the start of the, like, each day, and it's like, all right, so they were looking for people who bought manure and that cross-references with these chemicals. <laughs> and you look at them, and they're like, I hate this part. Mm -hmm. You look at their profile and, like, their, message, their text messaging and stuff, and you're like, man, this guy's a scumbag dickhead. But according to my reference sheet, he didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> and then you just mark him as safe and he gets through. I'm like, fucking, the dude's awful. Oh, man. And, um, yeah, and then, yeah, it's really cool. The, the, the beta, the alpha that they sent me is a contained storyline to the main game. That's cool. They're like, it doesn't, it doesn't take away, but it adds to if you play it. Yeah. Like, that's nice. I like that. Um, no, it's really cool. I, I'm glad I backed it. I backed the, the physical version where I get two, like, nuclear key code USBs that have the game <laughs> on them. I love that. So I can like launch I'm going to start game. doing that with uh, my games once when, make I don't know. Quirky things? Yeah, like, um, I'm thinking for Arbalest, like make... Um, Trees. UV. That doesn't make any sense. Get a pot plant. But Because um, Ar Arbor. Arbor. Okay, Arbalest. <laughs> I'm going to make little USB keys in the shape of the spaceships. That's cute. Yeah. I can stand up, that. them up with the game on them. Yeah, that's cool. I'm yeah. trying to think of a better way to make it local, though, without controller, like on mobile or something like that. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, but mm. maybe not. Just maybe keep it local. I definitely want to expand on it, though. Or pay somebody else to expand on it, like make other game modes and stuff. Yeah, I was thinking more game modes. Would be good. How many do you have now? Like four? Two. Two. Mm. This is deathmatch and power-ups? Uh, deathmatch and most kills in like 200 seconds. Most kills, okay, yeah. But... It's not enough. A bigger map with obstacles could be a good capture yeah. the flag one. Yeah, no, like that. Yeah. Or is it gonna make? I'm gonna make a sticky bomb one as well, where like you have to bump into each other. Oh, feel like you're I like of it. that. Hot potato. Hot potato yeah, yeah, that's a good one. But yeah, got a bunch of other stuff to do. <laughs> oh boy, that's a real big. Uh, what are they called again? Table. No, we put the sticky notes in like the do the do pile, and then you move it to the. The temporary part. Oh. We learned about it at uni. Scrum. Scrum board, that's yeah. right. That's not a scrum board. No, it's not. That's just a board. I've, notes I've given up on, like, assigning times and, like, you know, progress right, updates. You don't do design docs? No. Oh, no way. No one does. They're, like, you, you do prototypes. That's what you do They now. taught me. They, when they showed me that, I was like, no one does this. No. Nobody does. Like, if I needed to pitch 
a game to like people and investors and stuff like that and two hundred yeah. then yeah sure maybe a design doc would be handy but I think it's just like a yeah just make a prototype and get people to play yeah, it yeah, and that's, like a powerpoint presentation would be yeah. fine but um yeah so all I do now I just go what am I making and what do I need to make next for it so I got like two games it's like alright I need a character sprite and my other game I need a walk animation and that's it and however long that takes me to make that's it that's fair yeah. <coughs> I mean I got like another like Gantt chart with like all those tasks in but as far as like my schedule goes it's like oh Gantt chart look at you using the lingo I need to know what you're gonna make no, <laughs> um I'm sure I mentioned before I haven't done a whole lot since I left uni because yeah. I have my shit job you had a real job I have a real job which I don't like I want to get out of it eventually mm. um, but I'm getting back into it slowly I'm doing more drawing and stuff yeah no, that's good and I was watching an anime and there was a scene that was bugging me and I was like they're on like they're, an I, they're like they're animating on twos it should be ones <laughs> and I was watching a podcast where they talk about it and they're animators yeah and the dude's like now in this action scene which is their big scene they're animating on twos and it should be ones. I was like, yeah! <laughs> I love that. Like, super best friends. Like, whenever, like, they say something about how a studio should run or, like, what they need more in games and stuff like that. I'm always like, yes, no, you're exactly right. And then, yeah. No, it's so I good. just felt like a wave of confidence. Yeah. I was like, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it was, uh, the anime was Yuri on Ice. Which is an ice skating one. Boy, is that a beautiful show. Have you seen Umaru Hitomi-chan yet? Cult. <laughs> it's my favorite. I'm stepping away from the microphone. All right, wrestling through the bag. Got you something, Colton. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I love it. The little, what's her name, Umaru? Yeah, Umaru. The little Umaru chan, uh, little figurine, she's <laughs> on a bottle of coke. <laughs> Have you seen this show yet? Yeah. Oh, man. I was, like, talking to a girl the other day. She was, like, describing her life and, like, how much she goes, like, shopping and stuff like that. She's, like, trying to figure out what snacks pair well. <laughs> and I was, like, oh, man, like, you're gonna love the show, but it's, like, better ever, oh, hang on, this is not somebody's into anime. I can't start. Oh, no. Hang <laughs> over this. <laughs> I hate that when you realize someone doesn't like something. Yeah. And you're like, but this references you directly. No, I, so I used to get Loot Crate. I'm pretty sure I cancelled it at one point, but <laughs> they keep giving me them. I had Vessel give me money the other day. Who? Vessel. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> because they're garbage. <laughs> um, but they keep sending me Loot Crates. Are you paying for it still? No. <laughs> I think maybe my subscription's up at this point. Hey! But they sent me the... Is it going to kill you? What was it? Health? I don't know. Was it big missiles? Big. Oh, that's a longer fire. That's oh, cool. It. Yeah, look how long my bullets are now. Boom! Whole oh, that's a whole screen. That's a good upgrade. Um, yeah, the, the most recent one they sent me was like cooking. And it was like an apron... Uh, a cooking manga and like a little tiny Muru chan figurine. I was like, oh, <laughs> Colton would like this. <laughs> That's adorable. That's awesome. Um, yeah, now that I've got a job and I'm getting paid <laughs> regularly, I'm going to start cooking better stuff, I think. I'm, mm. look I'm looking forward to that. You, you subscribe to that channel of cooking. Yeah, munchies. Yeah. <laughs> Where Colin's a vegetarian and he goes, I would eat this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like oh, a, dude. it's just meat. Can you blame me? <laughs> no, I mean, it looked really good. Um, that was a good channel. Was it called Munchies? Yeah. I subscribe to that. I, can, I, I find it hard to cook because my dad's a chef. <laughs> I have He's no, like, son, you are disappointed. I have no reason My uh, to. brother, he was going to go to the Halloween party as uh, your dad. My dad? Yeah. Wait, when did he remember my dad? Because you went as our dad. Oh, of course. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I guess I did go as his dad too, didn't I? Yeah. How did that it, go? Good. Oh, how was the Halloween party? We haven't talked about that yet. Uh, no, I really enjoyed it. It was um, good. I didn't know I didn't know many people there, but there was two Ricks from Rick and Morty. Yeah. There was a Mr. Meeseeks. <laughs> Guess who won the Halloween competition? Who? She went as a loofah. Oh, that's that's pretty cool. It was a good costume. Ah! The only problem is no one there knew you either. 
<laughs> they were like, where'd you go? As they went, I'm Colton's dead. And they went, who? <laughs> and I was like, he's a Canadian friend of ours. It's it's offensive. <laughs> I'm like, it's just a stereotype. Like, oh, okay. And this one girl over the music could not hear me explaining. Oh, uh, yeah. And she was like, what are you? I'm like, a lumberjack. And she went, it's meant to be characters. And I'm like, uh, okay, uh, there's a guy who's not here. And then <laughs> like, the music... <laughs> <laughs> the music picked up and she didn't hear that part uh, and she gave me the dirtiest look because I didn't play by the rules and then walked away I was like no it is a character just not for you <laughs> it's an inside joke that nobody... inside joke uh, but... there were about four Britney Spears there were, oh, di- yeah. there were different eras of Britney oh so they all like coordinated that yeah yeah, right. yeah. that's cool there was, yeah. there was like circus Britney and toxic Britney um, bald Britney. I like that. One and then one guy went as the Lee Britney Allen guy. <laughs> I like Charles, his uh, Margot Robbie, Harley yes. Quinn costume. <laughs> so a guy, came, a guy, uh, you know, white guy, hairy, not slim, not fat, but you know, middling, came dressed as Harley Quinn with the short shorts and fishnet stockings <laughs> and a small shirt. Under the assumption that all the women would go as her as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he could be like, and a guy too. But no one else did. It was just him. So it was just one dude walking around just as Harley Quinn, showing off his ass. Who at one point in the party rubbed up against me as he walked by. Oh, he's a good guy. No, he's funny. I like him. As he walked by, he grinded against me. I was like, oh no. I got felt up by Mr. Me6. That was interesting. I think that was Terry. Sure. He gets he gets pretty crazy when he's drunk. <laughs> A guy came as um the t- the inflatable T Rex. Oh yeah. And could not fit in the house. <laughs> I love that every party. That was me when I, at the Skyrim party when I went as a dragon. Oh, of course. Oh the box. And That's I knocked right. everything over. What did I go as? I went as, as a bar wench. That's right. Where did they get that cool set again? <laughs> I don't remember. What a weird thought to purge from my mind. <laughs> of where I got a a core set from. Sure, I just borrowed it from Jamie. I don't think Jamie owns a corset. No, she wouldn't. Can you get a leather corset? She don't. Know. Yeah. It's a lesbian joke. All right, so <laughs> I already went down here. Yeah. Just keep going up, I guess. We ran to a few dead ends, but you couldn't open. Actually, let's uh, let's go down here. Okay. Let's check out what's down here. Oh wait, we already went there. Colton, have I talked about a series of unfortunate events before? Yeah. It's a book series that I really yeah, enjoy. Yeah, I, I heard you think it's okay. I got a tattoo of it. Has a Netflix show started yet? No, January. Uh, so I'm talking about that. The trailer came out. Is Jim Carrey playing uh, Lenny Snicket? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> Wait, Lenny Snicket? So is the movie good? The movie? Yeah. The movie's I, fantastic. I really like the movie. The so. movie is fantastic. Yeah, cool. Um, I haven't read the book, so I don't know if it does the book's any justice, but yeah, I really it like does. the movie. No, it 100% does. Yeah, the only cool. weird thing is it's out of order, but I can see why they did it. Because <laughs> it kind of goes... Two, three, one okay. in the order of events. But I can see why they would set up like that with the marriage being the end of it rather than the start of the first book. Did we already go down I don't think so. Um, no, Jim, no. Car- Jim Carrey was fantastic as Count Olaf. Yeah. But I'm interested to see how Neil Patrick Harris does. Oh, he's playing the he's bad play- guy. He's yeah. playing Count Olaf. Yeah. Oh, Count Olaf. Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. That's a good good casting. It is. He, he, he has the makeup. It looks great. He's the, the big hook nose and the giant sweeping eyebrows yeah perfect his voice is just his voice with a bit of like Broadway flair to it which I'm not he only had like one line in the trailer so I'm not 100% sure but he's got the chops I'm sure he can, he can oh, definitely. do it just okay what the fuck is that right, oh so you need a grappling hook baby yeah which you do not have <laughs> that's, that's not gonna work oh uh, you oh. trapped forever just kill yourself I can make it no I can't it's almost like they designed it so you couldn't. Alright, well, we'll continue on next week. We done yet? Hang on, don't... <laughs> just quit. We have a timer for a reason, Golden. So that we have an hour of content a week. Oh, it's looking at the audacity. You got 15 though. minutes, baby. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. Tough it out. Next, next door. But no, the aesthetic is great. Yep. Of the, the, the thing. They took a lot of liberties from the, the movie, which is Good. fine. The the music, was, the music, the movie was absolutely gorgeous. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Guess who plays Lemmy Snicket? Who? The the narrator, uh, Patrick Warburton. That's Cr- good. That's a good narrator. Good. Yeah. <laughs> he comes out in a suit and he does the like the the G man sort of like approach to it. Yeah. Looks good. 
He's like uh, the the trailer, the the initial Whoa. teaser trailer is great. Is it's him walking through the set of the show? Yeah. All the props and stuff, and he's yeah, like, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, and he's like, everyone here is miserable from filming this depressing story, and then you hear Patrick. New Patrick Harris in the background, like, what a lovely day! And he's like, oh, <laughs> well, nearly everyone. But the the trailer um, description is the story of Count Olaf, a man who just wants a fortune from those greedy little orphans, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. Oh, that's great. I love the premise of like that book. Like, it's so cool. Oh, and it's a thirteen series book, and you think that would wear thin after a while, but it just gets like better. I should start reading it once when I finish my three Stephen King novels and I'll... You can borrow mine. Start, start, start. They're great. I'm reading them again because they're fantastic. <laughs> um, That's one thing that I am upset that I didn't get into as a kid was reading books. I can say that. Yeah. I used to get books from the library like every week. I would get a Horrible Histories and like a Goosebumps book from the library. And my parents would always tell me to read but I was like, nah. no. I can see that. I, I didn't play outside as much and I yeah. wish I had done that more as well. Yeah, I played. I played in the dirt. And but I didn't have siblings, so it yeah, no, that's me true. outside by myself, and that's boring. Whereas a book is by myself, and it's a fun thing. <laughs> but I, I always like the 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 Lemony Snicket books. He even says it at one point where he's like, "As a child, you hate it when adults talk down to you, like you don't yeah. understand them." So all these books are written like you get what's going on. Yeah, cool. Um, because, you know, he's, he's like, you know, kids are smart. Yeah. <laughs> you get what's going on. And there was a running theme in the books was that the adults never understood. <laughs> Count Olaf walks in with like a turban, but he looks like Count Olaf. He's just wearing a turban. <laughs> and all the, all the adults are like, well, hello, Rajesh. And they're like, it's just Count Olaf. I think that's a, um, thing in The Simpsons as well. They do that too. With Sideshow Bob? Uh, where all the ad adults are like stupid, but all the kids... Yeah, I can right. see that. But like after they're like, at one point the kids get fed up and they're like, "He's come to wherever we are, dressed as a poorly disguised person, <laughs> trying to kill us, and no one ever understands." So at one point they just like, "Well, we don't trust any more adults. We're gonna deal with ourselves." So yeah, I'm gonna get on here. Oh, and the the highest point for me was they showed his scary VFD tattoo. Yeah. Which in the the movies looked terrible. It was just an eye. And the whole point of it in the book is that it looked like the words VFD, but in the shape of an I. Okay. As you can see, my tattoo, it's like, that's the yeah. V, and that's the F, and that's the D. And it looks great. And it's on the inside of his left ankle, where I always thought it would be in the books. I never really mentioned they say it's his ankle. Okay, that's cool. But I was always like, it's the left ankle on the inside, and that's where it is. They've they seen your tattoo. They've seen my tattoo. It looks different. It's, it's, it's like mine, but it has like a pup like an eye around it. Oh, uh, yeah. So you have but, to get yours uh, redone. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Much from the books. But uh, no, I'm happy with it. All around. I'm not happy with it coming out in January, though. Why? Oh, because uh, I think at one point they, they mentioned like maybe November, and I'm like, November, baby, coming out. I don't know, just no, 100% November. You, you things take time to make. What? No. Oh, man. I can't do this. Okay, we can. I need a break. We, we can be done. <laughs> All right. See you guys next week for more Samus. We did progress. We got power-ups. We did. We got rockets and we got uh, ball.